geekvs.com. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Weekly Game Chat. I am your host, Chris, as always, joined by my co-host, Sean. Yeah, you are, and here I am, and I love Reese Cups. We lied, <laughs> by the way. We lied. We're we not. We inter- inadvertently lied Ooh. to our, our inadvertently. Audience. Yes. Uh, last week, we said that John was away and he would be back this week. Oh, that lie. Yeah, but unfortunately, <laughs> turns out. John had a little bit of a family situation. Him and his his wife and kids are all fine. They're good. But, yeah. uh, Another family. He had, to, he had to go out of town, and uh, basically, he's just now getting back. So he is uh, unfortunately going to have to skip this week. But I promise you, with all my heart, that the boy is dedicated to the idea of playing Assassin's Creed Origins all week, so he can talk about it. Yeah. So. So. Y- y- we can almost 100% guarantee you that next week John will be here. Yes. And he is going to discuss in detail the origins of Assassin's Creed. Along with me. Along with, go, along yeah. with you, right. And I may end up picking it up. Oh. It, it just works better when we all play a game that we all like, right? Yeah. You like Assassin's Creed? I love them. I just didn't play the, the, the newest last ones. three. No, no, no. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I just, oh, did we get a laugh? Ladies he's and gentlemen, not here. He's not here. He's yet. not here yet. He doesn't oh, exist yet. We, we haven't. I thought we got a chuckle. I, I'm waiting for a special entrance. <laughs> <laughs> that slight Pick light, <laughs> light voice that could be called a Richard anytime you hear it is yeah. that of a friend of the show, Jeff. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Hey, we're doing real. He's it's, already beat Mike just he, right there. He's he actually said words. <laughs> so sometimes we do bring friends in from the show. We we've, we've talked about them. Uh, our friend Jeff is here, and uh, how you been, man? Doing, been doing good. Yeah, he listens to the show on the reg. Uh, he he may or may not work at the same place that we work, so we get constant feedback on things we can and can't do, should and shouldn't do as far as the show goes. But it's all in love. We're glad to have you. That's right. Yep. And uh, Jeff, if if you follow me on the Twitters, I think. Um, Jeff was the guy in the car when we got our original classic Nintendo minis. Yes. That's true. That I took a selfie with. And we both did secure a Super Nintendo classic mini. Yes, we did. Mm-hmm. And uh, we brought Jeff on because he likes what we're going to talk about today. So, again, thanks for coming on, Jeff. And I'm Chris's best friend. He just doesn't help <laughs> yeah, we that. Jeff and I used to be best Sorry, friends. Josh. <laughs> Josh, you are still my best friend. But. <laughs> uh, and Jeff and I were best friends for a minute. Um, and then Chris came and completely bulldozed me out of his life. It, it wasn't that hard to do. Like it was a vacant pretty, bulldoze. No, yeah. like basically all I <laughs> look, all three of us are Bama football fans. And basically all I would do every week is like, Jeff, do you want to watch the game? That's about all that happened. Yeah, for, that's for where the it began. Yeah. And from there it goes like, wait, you like beer? And I'm like, I do. And he's like, I like beer too. So, you know, do you want to drink beer and watch football? It's, do it, I? It's, yes. It's the beer that bonds us. And he said, did we just become best friends? <laughs> yep. We did. And then he does something weird and he goes, well, you know how we got to make this official. And he gets naked. And then, and then right, I'm out. <laughs> just the tip of the Richard. Just the tip. Oh, turn the lights oh, off and let's just play tip. the tip game. No, too soon, too early in the show. Now we're apparently, now we're apparently, uh, building, <laughs> now we're apparently building matching, uh, bromance, uh, PCs together too, right? So yeah. we can play PUBG. This is a fun fact. Uh, they do have computers that they have the same cases. Uh, Chris has a case that's accident in red where Jeff built his mighty fine computer and his is the same case, but accident in blue. Right, right. Yeah. And that blue <laughs> is so deceptive, wasn't it, Jeff? Yeah. It, Cause it's in a, it's in a baby blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I've got I've got several neon lights that are lighting it up. The lights just don't happen to match the case. <laughs> no, like I thought um, that's horrible. Like when I was because I looked at that case, I almost bought that case and uh, that version of the case. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was going to be closer to like TARDIS blue, uh, which is like a darker more. Yeah, this, you've got a, you've got a good TARDIS true blue, blood yeah. red. And like I said, like when I told you about it. I was like, he man, said, the red is like so much more pronounced yeah. than what the blue is. And I'm I rocking a North Carolina blue. Apparently. We're, we're nerds. He said TARDIS blue and I knew exactly what color blue he meant. I didn't. See, Doctor Who. Yeah, I didn't. 
I, I, I've See never that, done that. That's a TARDIS right there in that painting nah. that's fading in. There's a TARDIS blue right there. Okay. There it is. Yeah, there's okay. a TARDIS. Yeah, that's the Apparently it's in Assassin's Creed. See, found the that TARDIS out, is right? a big phone booth that the doctor I, I travels. I just went phone booth. But. First off, <laughs> it's not a phone booth. It's a police box. Police box, yeah. And even then, it's not a police box. It's a spaceship. It just happens to look like one. Thank you. I love, when, I, I love when things are said out loud. It makes them even better. Right? <laughs> so we so, learned a, an important lesson Saturday, by the way. That we will always destroy by week in football. Well, that and two, if don't call out Bama when you got a big game coming Ooh, up. <laughs> turns out the <laughs> Nittany Lions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take that, Penn State. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, Ouch. Yeah. Ooh. <sighs> mm. Yeah. That was. I'm, we're not Penn State fans, but if you watch the game, that was kind of heartbreaking. Actually, yeah. my uh, my wife's uh, my wife <laughs> my like, sister what? <laughs> my sister's uh, okay. My sister's hu- new husband right. uh, is a Penn State alum. And oh, all that's that, so pretty legit. I kind of like. Part of me wanted them to go on the field just to play them I, that would be cool to be able to like hey let's you watch still, this you game still here. might there's a lot of football left. that's true that's true but they got a they've got they got some ground to make up yeah they're gonna have some holes in that in that progression now yeah that sucks i think you just try to use football lingo something like that <laughs> it's just with the flip yeah, to the outside holes in this progression the, read tight end uh back check and down forth, check the, one two yeah omaha just, <laughs> Omaha just, just says things. Just throw Omaha out there. <laughs> like, it does, like what just happened? But Omaha. yeah. But we got some big football games coming up. And for you people that do like college football, we gotta play it old wrong. You week. you know what yesterday was. So by the time you hear our voices, the first set of college football playoff rankings are out. That is true. Ooh. And they're like, <laughs> just shut up. We want to hear we want to hear about video games. We don't care about football. Video games. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about video games? We can. I'm ready to talk I, I about I think we were games. all happy. Sounds like fun. I think we were all pretty happy based on the game we're going to talk about. At least I've, I'm having a good time. 2.0 out of 10. Ooh, <laughs> game of the year <laughs> not for Chris. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Topic time, 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 time. The topic is Super Mario Odyssey. Here we go. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) It's me, Mario. (laughs) That's all we're going to do the whole hour. It's just that. Believe it or not, this week was what we were been what we've been waiting for because of the three titles that drop on one day. And you know what? They all, <laughs> from what it sounds like, uh, and we're like I said, we're going to talk about Assassin's Creed next week, and I think at some point we're going to talk about Wolfenstein. At least, it, just, even if it's things. yeah, even if it's in an intro or something, I don't. Yeah. We'll, we're going to talk about it. We talked about yeah, that was like the biggest day because you had those three games, and then on top of that, for those who are fans of TV, uh, Stranger Things came out. Too. So it was like pop culture central last Friday for everyone. Good stuff. Um, so See, Jeff, Stranger Things is. That's, that's <laughs> hilarious. I've heard it's doing good things. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff is the guy to go to for Stranger Things, I think. Is he the guy? Uh, <laughs> you know, I do love it. I mean, you've you like watched them. Mm-hmm. Uh, fun fact. But I haven't Jeff, fired up season two yet. I, I haven't either. What does that mean about us? I'm being told by my wife. Your wife. Your wife. Yes. <laughs> that I got to wait till Wednesday, the day Take after that Halloween. Jump. Oh, why? I, I don't know. Something no. to do with getting past Halloween so that we can focus. But Jeff, you are the oh, guy that, well, that um, got I focused through the first four episodes. So <laughs> Jeff is the guy that got me started on The Walking Dead. Really? Really? He, he burned me a disc hmm. or bought me a disc <laughs> of the first season of <laughs> Totally Legit. <laughs> You can find both Jeff and Sean located at <laughs> Alabama Residences. Contact me for further details. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we're getting back to topic. Super Mario Odyssey, Odyssey. the yes. game. I think, you know, like, it, it, I think there are two things that everyone checks for a new Nintendo console. First is always the new Zelda. And then the second is always the new Mario, the 3D Mario game. It could be flip flop depending on yeah. what was released before. But yeah, those two, you got to hit the check marks. So the fact that we got them within seven months of each other, that is almost unheard of. 
We were, um, we, if you remember back when we talked about the launch in Zelda, we knew Zelda was going to be a launch title pretty much. Mm -hmm. Uh, we really weren't sure on if that Mario game would come out in October. Yeah. They said holiday. Much less. Yeah. We were going to say end of the year, maybe even going into first quarter. We didn't know. I doubted it. I was like, that game will get delayed just because normally Nintendo, if it's not done, they delay it. That's, that's their MO. So when I heard it was coming, I was like, Hmm. But then you saw the trailers at E3 and you're like, wait, I can be a T-Rex. Okay. Let's, <laughs> let's, I want to play this game. <laughs> um, uh, I will save any suspense and say, I, I like Zelda, but Mario has always been my thing when it comes to Nintendo. And this game delivers everything I ever wanted in a, in a new platformer from, from them. They are the kings. Well, since you're just going to come out and pop like that, I might as yeah. well come out too. And yeah, <laughs> I, mean, just... I think I think I'm further than both of you. And like, yeah. despite that, I have not had one part where like I've been like, okay, this is feeling old, or no, this it, is this yeah. is boring in any way. That, that's the thought I was having earlier today. Was you're going to get hate mail for this, but I love Zelda. But even in Zelda, for the past few iterations, minus this last one. Mm-hmm. It's almost like you're getting the same thing. Yeah. Just a twist in the story. But Mario has always held true that it's like every release, man, whether it's Galaxy or, or whatever it is, you better play this because there's going to be a change to it. That's yeah. going to be very interesting. Yeah, some that's little, true. some little something that's going to happen in it. For me, uh, and I know that this, how do I, when I got to go to 2D, mm-hmm. <laughs> it was very early on. And I went, Oh yes. Okay. And I went, what? Yeah. And that yeah. was, that was something that I only really got to really, and they, they had thrown in some levels, I believe in 3d world where yeah. there was some 2d elements to but it, but not like this, not like mm-hmm. this. Like we're ladies and gentlemen, we're talking like there are parts in this game where you're moving around in a 3d environment, but the section you're actually controlling Mario in is straight up classic super Mario bros art style and everything. And it doesn't matter. It, it copies down to the, point of like if you have a unique outfit on in this game which there are plenty of it will show that version of it in the classic uh eight bits eight bit style see i haven't seen that well for you for you people that played super mario maker Mm -hmm. and you scanned an amiibo that had like a zelda skin or whatever and it was the eight bit version bouncing around and jumping that's the same thing they did to here so if you got like a different thing on yeah there's very cool there's just like so many little things like um it feels like they took, uh, if anyone played 3D World, there would be these suits you would find throughout yeah. where, you know, of course we had had those in the past, but, but they really, really upped it up that time. Mm-hmm. And they took it and said, okay, screw having to find a suit or only being tied to one type of suit in an area. It's like, no, no, no. Whatever's around you, you have this cap and most of it you can throw and become you know you just throw the cap of it and boom you're a goomba yeah boom you're uh i was a uh, one of those it was a play on um earlier today the the turtles that jump up and down and they used to throw the jacks at you this time it's like you have a frying pan instead and that's what you're throwing i was one of those earlier i was a fireball at one point today you know well you mentioned the, the t-rex <laughs> yeah. My, yeah my son is hours above me in this game or, or beyond me but I'm, I was just cranking up the game and you find it early on. There's a huge T-Rex laying on the ground mm-hmm. and I walk around. I'm like, wow, this thing's pretty hype. Wh- wh- why is it here? Yeah. So then I walk around it and I try jumping on it and I try doing everything. And then I just like throw my head at it and see if I can wake it up. Instead, I possess it and I'm walking around as a T-Rex. And, and my son, who's again, hours past me in this game, who's been playing it just nonstop, walks by and he goes, Whoa, are you a T-Rex? And I'm like, yeah, how have you not seen this? And and we were talking um, before the show, and that the first time you come across and you get to see the T-Rex, they almost put him on a T for you. See yeah. what I did there? Yeah. yeah. And you, he's just kind of laying there and, and Sleeping. You're, like, you're like, okay, well, let's use him. And you actually use him to get a piece of the moon, which is the main you're thing right. you attempt on each planet. You have to continually... Get these moons to kind of charge your. It's called an Odyssey, right? That's what your ship yeah, is called. Yeah, that's the name yeah. of your ship. It, it's basically the equivalent of you played Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah. of the uh, stars in that game. It reminded me of a lot, a lot of that. Yeah. And Chris brought up Cappy, and if you guys have seen the intro trailers and stuff, you you see that kind of Princess Peach is taken away by Bowser, mm-hmm. and he's apparently going to marry her. And you're kind of left with, what am I going to do? 
and something happens to your hat and you get it replaced with a hat that kind of moves. Yeah. Now, now to be fair, he doesn't just take her away. <laughs> he beats the ever loving out of Mario. Like you think Mario, he beats him up in that he cut thing? He, he knocked his of, head off. He knocked his head off or his hat off, stomped on it and literally kicked him off a ship that was like hundreds of miles up in the air to where he landed in a completely new area. But yeah. he was fine because he's Mario. And apparently I don't feel like he just beat him up. I just feel ever. like he knocked him out of the thing. But yeah. Yeah. And then, and then like, <laughs> I, I do love the fact that they can get away with just the fact that it's like, look, what's the plot of this game? Oh, Bowser wants to get married, so he's playing a wedding. That's literally the game, right? You know? And I'm not, and I'm not as far in as you guys are, but it, it from what I've gathered, <laughs> it looks like. <laughs> Dang! It looks like each plant or, or or kingdom you go to or land you go to, mm. Bowser has been there, and he's collected Something. a ring from one or a bouquet of flowers from another. So it's obvious he's building up to this wedding. Yeah, I think uh where I'm at now, he's uh he's got the stupendous stew he picked up. Oh he's gotta have the best stew stew at his wedding. Yeah. Gotta have good food. I will say that uh food is very vital to the reception part of a wedding. Just saying how how do you know that? (laughs) Uh don't don't I don't we don't talk about that on that. I'm gonna be interested when I'm a DJ. (laughs) (laughs) I'm waiting for the part where I show up and uh and you know he's like, oh, I picked up the greatest turntables from this world. <laughs> so, uh, dude, don't, don't play with me. Um, Bond so, DJ. It was what Sunday, Saturday or Sunday morning. I texted Jeff and I mm. said, "How cool does it feel that we're sitting here?" And I could see that he was on playing. Mm. I was like, "We're sitting here playing our Nintendos, playing Mario." You yep. know, like grown men, and we were very excited for this game. So that was very cool. And then I get a text from Chris. And it basically alludes to a part that Bowser has in his hair. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I was like, because there is a part where uh, you have a about eh, a quarter of the way through, you do have a little mini fight with Bowser. And he's tossing his hat at me, and I'm looking at him. I was like, wait a minute. This man side parted his hair for the wedding. <laughs> yeah, like, that's, <clears throat> that's what I get from Sean. He says, uh, how cool is it? We're sitting here like old school playing Mario. And for a moment, yeah, I thought about it. It's like a uh, old Saturday morning, Sunday morning. Yeah. You're, sure. you're sitting there, you booted up your plan and you got a bowl of popcorn next to you. Yeah. And then, and then it wasn't longer. Chris goes, how cool is it? Mar- uh, uh, Br- Bowser's got a side part. <laughs> My text to Chris unsolicited. Bowser has a side part. LOL. <laughs> and I said, ha, 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 ha. And he said, gotta look fly for the wedding. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so that's pretty dope. Yeah. It's like, I think that's a testament to how well they're able to craft that style. Like you alluded to the fact, like the last couple of Zeldas, um, unless you're really a hardcore fan, it just kind of felt like to me, it was flat. More of the same. Yeah. It was like, you could play the first couple of hours and you might get some enjoyment, but. There was something else that it felt like was out there that you could go play that was giving you that and much more. That's how it felt to me, at least. Like you went, you went to bat against me and John with that. And we're 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 going to take up for Zelda and say no. This was this was awesome. Yeah, uh, they're apples and oranges. They're big franchised, you know, heavyweights mm-hmm. for Nintendo. But to me, they're Zelda started something that was great and it it launched the the console and it was an awesome game. Oh, I'm not. It has about its the flaws. What are you talking about? I'm just talking about like the Some previous the, pre- the last couple of ones. Okay, but Mario, it's 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 this joy. It's yeah. this. It's not too hard. Me and Jeff talked about that too, where Jeff had just oh, gotten done, he got done playing Evil Within Two and yeah, what was the other game? Cuphead. I mean, I'm, I told Sean I'm coming straight off a of Cuphead yeah. and Evil Within oh, Two, both that demand precision and or or let's be honest, kind of brutal in 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 how yeah, hard Cuphead, they are. Cuphead doesn't care. No, yeah. and and so you Get know good. I come straight off of those two. I fire up Mario. And, you know, then I encounter my first boss fight and I'm like, all right, here, here we, we go. go. How here many we- times have I got to fight this? <laughs> and then, and then I remember that this game is not developed like a cuphead. No. This is for, this is for not only me at my age, but also my son at his age. Sure. And, and, you know, you don't want to make Mario so difficult an eight, nine year old can't play. So correct. Yeah. I, I had to and realize it, that. It does quick. that while bringing like a literal smile to my face while I'm playing. True. I'm enjoying every second of it. Well, see, I think. Getting back to my uh, point from before there, like where Zelda felt like maybe it was going stale and it needed something like Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I'm not as high on the game as as you and John are, but I still think or probably you too, Jeff. I like I still think it's a great game. I think it's the best Zelda game that's come out in a long while, in a long while. Probably my favorite since Wind Waker. I I absolutely Uh, loved it. Holden again, loved it. How many times did he 
play through oh, Zelda. Oh, yeah. He blew through it. I he mean, was, like, two or three times. And then he would come back, wait, how'd you get all that stuff? And yeah. like, well, I, I, I explored Holden. Yeah. I went around and <laughs> I did things. Uh, but anyways, uh, with Mario, the difference is, is that, if we're being honest, at, at least from the 3D perspective, there's just no one else who makes a 3D platformer on their level. And they show it every single time they make a new one where it's like, okay, they just raised the bar for this again and kept it fresh. And it's where that thing is like, no matter what, even though the story doesn't change that much and it's kind of the basic thing and you know what you're getting when you walk in, it's fine because they craft these wonderful worlds to explore that have just tons and tons of secrets. Like, I don't know if you've looked at the list of this game, like most of these areas, there's like 60, 70 moons to collect yeah and i'm sure as heck not finding anywhere near <laughs> you, all of them i like that you bring that up because yeah. me and jeff are talking and jeff's like yeah i got all the moons you know there was like six or eight or whatever you said i no, got all of them no there was there was 16 you know there's the bubbles that nope <laughs> and sean's uh, like uh no <laughs> <laughs> those are the ones that that you, you need, need to get yeah. to continue to move on yeah and i've kind of like taken that approach you know especially because for the show i wanted to get a little bit further for ahead. the show I, I did what I had to to move a little long and, and go to the next area. But that's the cool thing is every time you come back and you start looking around your surroundings, you go, there's something over there, which means there's a way to get over there. I might not know how to do it yet, but if I explore this thing and think outside the box, eventually What's it will it will come and, you know, I'll find the way to get there. Well, I asked Sean today, you know, I walk into a, a, a square room and the guy tells me, he says, um, there's a hidden treasure in this room. Mm-hmm. But... And he's got a radio playing music next to him. But in order to find it, you're going to have to dance to the tune. Feel the music, basically. Yeah, feel the music. So mm. I walk around, and obviously I can feel the, the controller vibrating as I move in one location or another mm. more than the other. And then I finally, I basically hone in. Okay, this is the spot. <laughs> so, so what do I do? I jump. I throw my hat. I, I, I think I'm doing everything, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to quit. So then finally I'm like, let me jump and do the old butt bounce. <laughs> And I love the funny. butt bounce. There it is. So yeah, you always gotta, do the butt bounce. You got to consider consider all your controls and and speaking yeah. of controls, you play it mostly handheld, right? Yes. And I'm playing it pro controller. How are you playing it, Chris? Uh, I've been playing it a combination of handheld and um, in where it's docked, and I have it in the the cradle. Yeah, thing. the cradle thing. How's that? How's that work? Because that's three different ways we're playing it. Basically, it's fine. I've also played it pro pro. Um, Pro is probably my, would be my preferred method. I think yeah. I'm not you know the one big knock I think this game you can make is that look Nintendo loves motion controls and they want to make sure that you know that they're there. And there are certain things here in this game where I'm like I don't want to do motion. Well, stuff. I, I counter that with you don't have to certain things unless you you're do. a little bit farther than me. Certain thing like certain moves like with throwing Cappy. Cappy yeah, I, I found that I can get away from. Mm-hmm. There's one where you can spin your hat in a circle Correct. Like really fast. That's you, what we talked about today. You got to do like a big snap with the controller. Mm-hmm. Um, but Or you can just throw your hat a bunch of times at the enemies. <laughs> like the thing is more and of jump. like if you want them to like throw the cap up, you have to go up. You know, yeah. you have to if you want them to go down, you have to throw down, you know, like and, and those things, they actually really do help you at times. And it's like. Man, I wish there was something that I could just turn this off and hold down some sort of modifier that would tell it, okay, I want to go here. I want to do this and it would be easier. But, you know, I, I will say this. They are probably some of the most accurate and well, uh, fe- you know, they feel natural. They really do. Doing. Um, after about 20, 30 minutes of doing it, you're like, okay, I got it. I'm yeah. fine with this. Yeah. And about Cappy. We've said his name. And by at this point, if, if you, if Mario has been on your radar, you know what Cappy is or who he is to this game. Mm-hmm. I think it's been an amazing addition. Yeah. Um, the fact, like you said, that you threw a hat on a T-Rex, you threw a hat on a fireball. I threw a hat on a red Cooper Troopa guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you're running around bouncing and, and there's little animals that, that can get you to different places that if you didn't have a Cappy, I wonder how you would get to them. Obviously they put them in there so you can use Cappy to use them, but I took mm. control of a tank. Yeah, that was pretty. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty dope. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, they get for you secret people like that love secrets in video games. There's a ton of secrets. There's paintings you can find that take you to special moons on other planets. Yeah, and other kingdoms. Um, if you watched E3 or the Nintendo Treehouse, you got to see uh, what's the the Sand Kingdom. 
You got to see a lot of playthrough with that. You got to see the Wooded Kingdom. You yeah. obviously got to see New Donk City. I was very interested in, yeah. in seeing that that uh, footage of how, actual how much gameplay you're going to have in New Donk City. New and, Donk is actually one of the bigger worlds uh, and, well, out there. If, if I hadn't have seen Holden's play so far ahead of me, personally, I ran into, again, you mentioned the window. Mm-hmm. My first time finding that window on the column, it was blacked out. I couldn't get in it. Right, until right. you did something else. Until right? I did something that allowed me to get in it. Well, when I get in it, 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 I, I basically transport up to the top of a tower in New Donk City yeah. where I, there may have been a star up there. I can't remember. But the fact that I got up there, there wasn't much to do up there, which led me to wonder, okay, so New Donk City definitely exists in this game, but how much do I get to explore in New Donk City? But then I saw a holding in it. And, and it's a whole yeah. other kingdom. Yes. I think it's called Metro Kingdom. It's called the Metro Kingdom and it starts out kind of isolated the very first part like until you beat the the boss uh, like you know the local boss for it and then it opens up a lot and you can go around and really climb up the different buildings that are there and like there's this interesting storyline like for one the fact that uh pauline is the uh, mayor of new donk city i think is perfect so she's in there if anyone remembers that go back in your your jump man uh lore uh but there, there's a lot of cool little things to find that are owed, owed to classic Mario on there, like the beginnings of it. And I will say this now. If you play this game, you need to make sure you finish everything in New Donk City because the end cap of it, and you will know when you get to it, the end cap of the Metro Kingdom, aka New Donk City, is one of the coolest send ups to the history of Mario I have ever seen it is like one of my favorite moments in gaming this year by far yeah really? you, what he just said he dropped that on me not too long ago and for chris to, i i don't know why mm-hmm. but that resonates with me very very like well because this is a mario game that it's mario and you've played it enjoyed it and then you say something like that so that should yeah. really what what it makes me think of is um so obviously it's mario and you're gonna get what you get out of mario mm-hmm. um it, the, the fact that there's something to look forward to that's mm-hmm. really going to be appealing. Now, now I really want to see what it is you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you should know. Like, you don't have to do it, but it'll be like, hey, do you want to do it? Do it. Just go do it, and you will have fun. <laughs> and there's awesome music. There's a cool the, theme to the, it. The music has been very good throughout. Uh, I was telling him. I went into a room earlier. I was like, Jeff was. We were talking on uh, Skype, and I go, hey, Jeff, I'm in a room that's made out of cheese, and for whatever reason, I think the Motel 6 uh, theme is playing in the background. <laughs> yeah, and I told him, I was like, only in Mario yeah. are you yeah. going to hear somebody say, I'm in a room made of cheese. And it feels completely natural. <laughs> that's completely um, awesome. I really can't wait to see how this wraps up. I, I have to say, like, I don't know if I can tell someone – Hey, you're justified in buying a Switch to just play Zelda and Mario. You know, that's for you to decide if that's something. A, you have the money, and B, what it's really worth to you. But I will say this. If you do buy a Switch, I think you owe it to yourself to buy those two games, Um, especially if you in any form love platforming. I'm very interested to see when I'm done with Mario Mm -hmm. what's next that I'm really going to be pulled to play. But I can say to your point that these two have made it worth it to me to this point. Yeah. And you uh, played a little bit of Mario Kart. We're not going to forget yeah, about that guy. That's true. My bad. Yeah. yeah. I am waiting to see, like, you know, after this, there really isn't much that we know as far as our do, do immediate we, future. Do we got a release date for that Xenoblade game? Because that's going to be a, I think a that's niche ca- market. But see, like, that's but the thing. But it's going to be, it's going to show what the, the Switch can do. It's kind of like the thing now, like, where you're moving further down the list. So yeah. it's either they've got to come up with something that can be mass appealing that we're just not we don't know anything about yet which would be cool or else you just wonder what it could be because yeah like you know sure poking tournament's going to be big or whatever and i'm sure you know whenever metroid comes out that'll be fine too but like these are the heavy hitters for nintendo as like far where's as a the new donkey people. kong you yeah know? that'd be great um Where's, you know, where are they doing with Smash Bros? Is that well, getting ported over or right. are they going to remake or make a new one? Perfect. Oh, are we going to have some other big ports like a Mario Maker finally? It, it feels like a natural fit for the Switch. Yeah, yeah I could see that being um, like next fall. Well, we, we do know that 
like Chris alluded to, Nintendo's they 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 set out a schedule, mm-hmm. and to this point, they're really hitting everything they promised. True. Um, but we're getting to that point now where all that's great, the sales are great, but we want to know kind of a little bit what's next. Yeah, it's almost like it feels. I want to say they're definitely nowhere near Microsoft territory of this stuff, but you're you are like sitting there and go like, okay, that's a cool little niche thing for that group, but. I want to know, like, what's your next big thing? Because, yeah. you know, like, that's the problem with Microsoft right now. Everyone's looking and going, like, when the heck are you releasing something uh, that's exclusive to your console? It looks like they are doubling down on Splatoon 2 and yeah. uh, the True. fighting game. Oh, ARMS. Arms. Yeah. yeah. I was watching their news segment. They were really bringing up some new updates that were coming out. So it's good to see that they're at least giving support for that. That's true. Um, We'll see. I, I, I've enjoyed every minute of it, getting back to Mario. I literally can't wait to play it again. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got friends who like to play PUBG and Fortnite. So they've, they've kind of brought me at nighttime. Yeah. You know, the dark hours of the night. We're <laughs> what, playing those games. <laughs> what about, um, I'm curious your thoughts on the new, is it a new heart system in Mario? It's a little yeah, bit. Yeah. That's a good point to bring up. You, you kind of, you have, you can only get hit three times. You have a life meter that's, you get hit three times. Up to uh, six. If- if you, if you get a, if you get a different heart container that has like a crown on it, it gives you three more. So you can have up to six hits, which is weird because in, in most Mario's, like from when we were little, you either have a mushroom or you're mm-hmm. little. Uh, but it doesn't feel like I had to worry about dying as much. Like in Mario Galaxy, I felt like you had more times to get hit. Yeah. Am I just making that up? No. Nah, um, I can't remember. In Galaxy completely. two, I feel like you could get hit like five or six times before it really mattered. I feel like. In all, in, in all fairness, like, I don't mind the heart system at all, cause I think that's how you get a, around, like, the idea there's no mushrooms or whatever yeah. in the game. Um, it seems to me like the game is obviously designed where pretty quickly you don't need to worry about dying that much, because, I mean, unless you're just spending every coin that you have, which is oh, kind we, of hard to do. We need do. to bring that up. Yeah, I was yeah. I was going to ask about well, that. I, I like, know we sound like we're fixing to wrap this thing up with Mario, but there is a cool, if you want to talk, anyone y'all want to talk about, there's a cool way that you can purchase in-game stuff. Yeah, so throughout the world, there is regular coins, which is just, you can buy certain things with that. Uh, but there are also in every single kingdom, there's a unique coin, which is usually there's somewhere between like 50 to a hundred coins, depending on how big it is. Uh, and with those coins, there's a, there's a shop every time called like, was it the cap cappy shop or something, yeah, like, that? something like that? Something like that. And you can crazy spend your caps. That's it. Something like crazy that. caps. Yeah. Uh, there's, you can spend your coins there. And with those unique coins, you can get unique outfits that are kind of exclusive to the world. Um, for example, in-, in the Sand Kingdom, mm-hmm. um, it's a Mexican Hispanic themed village ish. You can't prove that. that um, and you, you get a sombrero. Um, and what's the thing called? That you, a poncho? Yes. Poncho. Yeah. And those, were, um, and, and, and the cat people, one of them's yellow that represents coins. Yes. And the other one is purple, which represents the currency of each kingdom. Right? Yeah. And those, you can get stickers for your, for your Odyssey. You can get, uh, kind of memorabilia that you can trinkets. also, yeah, trinkets you can put on display and all that kind of stuff. If you want to collect it, it kind of gives you a reason to really dig for the purple coins because you will find plenty of regular coins. And honestly, that's the kind of thing with where I was getting back to with the hearts and all that. Even if you die in this game after about five seconds, it just doesn't matter because <laughs> it's 10 coins right, to, to, to restart. Yeah, yeah. Restart. And you can get those coins back usually right away. As long as you're to right be, there. And I have to, I, we have to be honest. I'm a, I'm a big Nintendo supporter. If you've ever listened to this show, I love Mario, love Zelda, He's a fanboy. but, but when you, right. when you brought up just now, it made me remember something. Um, so, so let's say I, I collect these coins that are specific to each kingdom and I go buy the things that are specific to each kingdom. You know what's missing? A trophy system. Mm-hmm. You know, an achievement that says, hey, you've equipped, you know, three different things from three different kingdoms or something like that. Yeah. It feels like a really good fit. And I wonder if they've, they're they setting up their games to kind of introduce that trophy system thing that they're working on. I don't know. I, I, w- I would like to see when they finally introduce something that they go, okay, um, these are the games you played. Do you want to see what trophies you've learned, you've earned from your previous playing through? That'd be really cool. You, you did tell me earlier today, um, speaking of, of why you're gathering these, these outfits and such, I thought it was just strictly decoration, but you said there's actually a purpose 
to having these because they yeah. allow you access to certain locations to mm-hmm. get stars. I didn't mm-hmm. realize that because again, moons. I thought I had got all the stars. Their moons. Or, sorry, all That's the okay. moons. It's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, apparently getting the, the, the <laughs> decorations, costumes, what have you, give mm-hmm. you access to other areas. So yeah, you'll see doors and they'll be like, hey, well, if you want to get in here, you need to look like a top notch chef. <laughs> You do not. <laughs> Goodbye. One of the or else uh, you'll come up and you look like a chef, and you're like, "Come on in." My favorite so far has been the wooded area clothing because you kind of like you're on a safari. Yeah, those those are pretty dope. Before that, it was the Sand Kingdom, um, um, which is cool. The best one I have right now, I think, uh, there's a sailor outfit you can have him wear. Pretty dope. Yeah, I was like, look at that. He's in the Navy. And I found that I like the, the specific kingdom currency items better than the mm-hmm. overall. And, and in that shop, you can also buy moons. That's a free moon. Well, not free, yep. but you can pay for it. Yeah, it's like a hundred <laughs> coins. It's nothing. <laughs> it's and, super- and most importantly, for a thousand coins, you can have Mario shirtless. <laughs> Just so running around finally, in boxers. We have finally answered that riddle. Of what does Mario Wait look like when he... I, Jeff, I haven't done that yet. Have you done that? I haven't done that. And it's available. It's first thing, Chris. Did. Chris, I got to get a thousand coins. I got to do it. <laughs> done. But we're, we're loving it, people. If you have a Switch, there's no reason why you don't have Mario. I'm sure they've gotten it. I hope so. If they haven't, I don't, I don't want to talk to them anymore. If somebody's like, well, I was working. I've been on a project. I checked. Go get it. It's really good. Yeah. For definite, sure. Definite pickup. Want to yeah. do this news? Um, as long as you don't say like SNES in it anywhere, I'm good. <laughs> there was a Betty posted a thing on there. said, what's your, oh, what, what drive you nuts? That's uh, a word that's mispronounced. And I said, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It's pronounced SNES. <laughs> I want to throw out there. I listen week to week. Yeah. Because these are my, my bros. Yeah. And you guys give Chris a hard time about SNES, but I'm here yeah, to here back we, him up. God, I am, where's I'm, John? I I'm need a, John. I, hey, I'm a SNES guy, too. I need John. You were quickly moving up to the po- John, I'm sorry. You've been replaced. I'm have you, have you guys ever done a poll? Just, <laughs> right? just of your viewers to, to we, see? We should do that. Well, well I, think, I think it naturally occurred on the Twitters, um, where after one episode, we really hammered out that on Chris. They said, well, I actually say this, and you're right, or no, Chris is right. Last year, I threw out the uh, give me your top five. Yeah. Um, so this year, I'm, I'm going to come up with something. To do with the pronunciation of SNES. That's yeah. pretty good. Somewhere <laughs> somewhere along those lines. I did. You did toss that out. I keep forgetting that. Did we officially give him credit or did he just make himself good no, credit? No, we can't. We can't give him that ego. He, we now have to, quote, take care of him. He would say we were carrying him through, and I can't oh, have that because I'm the one who carries him through. Jesus. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, don't play PUBG with Chris. Go to news, Chris. <laughs> Hot off the press and straight to your ears. Weekly Games Chat presents the news. 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 Did, I do, did I do it right? Did it. News. Did. See, John, he sold it. <laughs> That's all you have he to do. Sold it. I sell, I he sold it. sold it. <laughs> yeah, I, I am going bad. <laughs> Speaking of mispronunciation. Uh, first up, Black Friday leak. Ooh. Yeah, right. Y'all hear that? Black Friday's close. A leak for American retailer Kohl's shows that a major price drop for the PS4 and Xbox One uh, will be coming on Black Friday. According to the leak ad, Xbox One S 500 gigabytes will be available for $189.99, while the PS4 one terabyte will be available for $199.99. This marks the first time either console has been available for less than $200. That's a big deal. Yeah, It is, but if you've moved on to the One X or the PS4 Pro, sure, sure, it doesn't matter. But it's, dude, that's going to be big for the See, Black Friday holiday it's, season. It's not big for people like us, the <laughs> the regular, like you know, the hardcore and all that, and the I would say even the standard guys, you know, uh, like standard Sanders, yeah, the standard um, Sanders of the will. world. Yeah, yeah, we'll call them that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they've of course already gotten their consoles. They're playing the Call of Duties and all that. But then there's this other sect, you know that. They're looking at this as a gift for their child. They're looking, you know, they aren't people that have tons of money to just go throw around. And this is like when a lot of the sales really start to hit, where if you tell them like, hey, between Black Friday and Christmas, 
you're gonna be able to get these consoles for Dude. about 200 bucks and maybe even get a game or two That's with what it? i was gonna ask are i throwing a game in or not in this one uh i'm interested to see though of course you know like There'll best be buy games. and all that will have theirs and i would think yeah. Coles really isn't yeah you know they're they're like a part of that chris though if Coles has this price exactly somebody else is going to have something similar exactly you have to think like what's walmart putting out and, you know well, well walmart puts out a lot do they <laughs> yes she does wait what uh, what <laughs> amazon puts a lot of people out of work wait what <laughs> whoa <laughs> jeff and i are, are black friday shoppers chris here we are you i was there. literally with you on black friday i, I did this on purpose well, that's uh. what he does <laughs> I pulled him through on the uh, buying his TV. He wasn't sure what <laughs> he was going to do. You in that Theoretically, process. that wasn't a Black Friday. It was more of a uh, what do they call it. It was Thursday? literally Black Friday. It was like because it was twelve oh two at night. Yeah, yeah, that's Black Friday. Yeah, <laughs> you're like technicality. I, Dang uh, it, <laughs> Chris was at Best Buy with me. And yeah, we, I was, and I actually sold. How many TVs do you think I sold that night for Best Buy? <laughs> Between These the people would come up not know what they wanted. I swear to God, I sold like four TVs for Best Buy. Actually, I've read really good things. I almost <laughs> think I was going to buy this one, but I'm going to go with this one instead because it's got this, this, and this. And I was like, okay, <laughs> just buy one. <laughs> and then fine. we got to add that tidbit, Chris. I set it down for a minute, and I was going to buy a different one. Yeah, I remember this. I do remember And then this. finally Chris said, dude, what are you doing? Just buy this. <laughs> do yeah. it. Uh, Halo Master Chief Collection update. Ooh. 343 Industries is updating Halo the Master Chief Collection to resolve issues with the game's matchmaking system and improve performance on both Xbox One and Xbox One X. Development director Frank O'Connor stated, It may sound simplistic, but MCC was essentially six pretty different game engines strapped together and interlinked with a highly complex and highly delicate new systems. 343 plans to re-architect the game taking advantage of the Xbox One X's new hardware. O'Connor also stated, from a personal perspective, the MCC launch was one of the lowest ebbs professionally. Every angry mail I received, I took to heart. I felt like I had personally let our fans down. I also understand that silence can be frustrating. You have complaints or questions, and we will try to answer them as best as we can, but sometimes bad information is worse. I'm going to follow up next year, after we have a better detail on the fixes and the Xbox One X update. And uh, to follow through with an even more detailed technical breakdown of what broke, why, and how we fixed it. That's what we owe you, and that uh, that in a game we can both finally be satisfied with. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You like... Totally you, not expected. You, you don't expect it, and you, I don't want this to sound like you like to hear somebody... Um, actually feel the bad emails you don't want them to actually get the bad emails but when they do it's good to hear that they took it to heart yeah um i can't wait to see because when by the time i played the master chief collection it was okay mm -hmm. um i think there were still some matchmaking issues it's never been perfect from what i've read yeah it, but it, i think it was better yeah definitely better than at launch i know at launch it was a hot yeah, mess. launch was terrible so do, when they got the 78 teraflops to work with <laughs> And then he can say words like re-architect something. I can't wait to see what it's, I'm gonna, I'm uh, gonna play it again probably. Are you? Well, theoretically, I need to be, is it? Are we three? teaming up in Halo again? Well, I, I started a campaign. Like I, I started, I wanted to beat all of them again. And, uh, I don't know where I'm at. We can start over. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, we're talking Did about you Halo beat the or? first one? Yeah, be the yeah, first one. You were on two. I was on two. I think so. On two again. We're talking about Halo or Res 7? That's funny. Mm. That's funny, folks. Ouch. That's funny. Mm. Inside knowledge. I just knowledge. need that in there. I hope it, uh, I hope it ends up, I, I, I know they've said like, look, this isn't going to be here anytime soon. It's going to be like about a year before this is or all Or do you think up. he meant in, in the new year, like no, January, February? There was some more details on where he kind of like laid out like, because obviously they have to do this in conjunction as they work on Halo 6. So you and just went, oh, omit Ollie on me and just forgot to tell me that stuff? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> MPD September. Here we go. After a slight delay, MPD has released the top 10 selling games for September. Destiny 2 was not only the top selling game for the month, but has already become the top selling game for 2017. Additionally, they added that while Nintendo Switch was the best selling 
current generation console, it was actually the SNES Classic. Die. Uh, th- that's what the show notes say, so that's how I read it. Uh, <laughs> that was the top-selling console for the month. The top 10 games for the month are as follows. Number one, Destiny 2. Number two, NBA 2K18. Three, Madden NFL 18. Four, FIFA 18. Five, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Bell. Six, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Seven, Grand Theft Auto V. Yeah. Of course it is. Eight, <laughs> NHL 18. Nine, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And ten, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six The Siege. Which one surprises you the most that's on there? On here? Uh, probably the fact that Rainbow Six The Siege is still coming in top ten. For me, it's Rabbids actually being that high up. Yeah. Rabbids makes sense because, remember, it came out like on the 28th, so it wasn't on But last I still month. didn't expect it to be top five for September. True. Uh, the theme, though, is sports. Yeah. <laughs> Dominate. Sport. Americans love sports, apparently. <laughs> really love NBA 2K. Who would have figured that would have outsold uh, Madden, right? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. It's good. I mean, it's- and FIFA here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't not, know. I not told, worldwide. I, I told you I was at the mall at Hot Topic for a, a pop, mm-hmm. which is next to in our mall, uh, GameStop. Yeah, and there was a crowd of people on to me this random day waiting for GameStop to open, and I'm like, what are these people waiting for? Mm-hmm. Come to find out, it's NBA. So when you're like, see, what's Jeff? basketball? Yeah. Right? So <laughs> Jeff, basketball is. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I've said, like, of all the openings I went to this year outside of, like, you know, obviously a console launch is something different, but of the regular ones I've gone to, I didn't go to Destiny, of course, with you guys, but, uh, I mean, yeah, NBA 2K, when I, when I went to go pick that up, there was, like, easily over 100 people there. That's what's up. So, oof. Metal Gear Survive. Uh, <laughs> has a release date. Chris's most anticipated game. Yeah, right. <laughs> I just didn't want to even type this. Konami's first Metal Gear game since Kojima's departure at the end of 2015 has a release date. Metal Gear Survive will hit Xbox One and PS4 stores on February 20, uh, 20th, 2018. The game was initially scheduled for late 2017 release, but was delayed to early 2018 at E3. Cool. I don't want to say anything <laughs> else about right. this stupid thing. You're welcome for anyone, that information. Yeah. Anyone else got anything? Because no. no. Jeff's cool. probably going to buy it. It's a zombie type survival. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but just, you didn't really play Metal Gear. That's right, did you? It, yeah. I, I played Metal Gear. Did you? Okay. Yeah. Favorites. It Sons looks like it's on my top five. Okay. Oh. Yeah. All right. Oh. Whoa. 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 <laughs> Face. Sons of Liberty was a game changer for me. I love that game. That is a good game. That is a good game. Microsoft. Mm, this is no this longer is sad. connected. See, it's clever because it's about connect. See, you did that. I did that. Yeah. <laughs> Microsoft has announced that after seven <laughs> years, the Xbox Connect accessory will no longer be manufactured. This includes both versions of the accessory, the original Xbox 360 and then the 2.0 that launched with the Xbox One. Originally released in 2010, Connect was designed to change the way gamers interacted with their consoles using their body and voice to control the console. While the accessory is no more, the technology will live on through Microsoft's Cortana Personal Assistant, Windows Facial ID System, and Microsoft HoloLens. So, I uh rest in peace connect. How am I going to play that one game where I'm I'm a band leader like this and I move my hands back and forth? Oh man, yeah. Better go get you one. Uh, the Fantasia one. Fantasia, yeah. That was a fun game. The game was awesome. Yes, it was. Um, did you ever play it, Jeff? It was made by the guys who made, like, the, was it Rock Band or Guitar Hero? It was folks who did Rock Band, I believe. Yeah. No. So you, you got the connect and you, you played like Disney songs and stuff. And like it, you were like Mickey and Fantasmic mm-hmm. and like things would happen. Like, and you're like, this you had, is like, amazing. <laughs> imagine like you were conducting, imagine. Like the art of Fantasia, right? Mm-hmm. And then like your, the music of of like Bohemian Rhapsody. Amazing, and it's awesome to do it. The, the fact that you, the connect is going away—that's news to me. I didn't know that. But what I'm yeah. hearing is, is just throw it in a drawer, and ten years from now, when you build a gaming PC, yeah, <laughs> it'll be <laughs> ready for you. So, <laughs> fun fact, ladies and gentlemen, we we alluded to early in the show that Jeff he built a nice new fancy computer, amazing, and uh, we Skype from time to time and Jeff would always use the, the 
I use my laptop. His to laptop Skype. to Skype, and he just talks to us while he's doing stuff on his computer or whatever. And so today, Jeff dropped this bomb on me. Oh, well, so, so <laughs> Sean wanted to Skype and instead of using my standard laptop, cause apparently I'm standard Sanders. <laughs> you are. I, I wanted to use my new PC. So I go, I've got to have a uh, video camera around here somewhere. And I look in my, my drawer that I keep all my computer components in. And there's my old, uh, Xbox 360 camera, which is about an inch squared. Yeah. Which for me was awesome. He's like, I got a camera. This yeah, is nice. It's USB. I plug it in. It looks good and it's working. But these guys just. Well, I, we find it awesome because like Chris brought up the fact that like not a lot of people bought that thing no. on the 360 back in the day. It was this thing like. And it's working and you look great in it. There was a bunch of stuff before Kinect came out that it was like little mini games that were designed to work with it most notably as we we were talking about lunch uno which uh which, led to a lot of parental issues if uh you <laughs> if you want to talk about many interesting friday and saturday night. it was like how many richards am i gonna say that i feel like that's like where chat roulette started was right there it's like, oh, it was definitely it was like a over spin under and richard and <laughs> over and under richard. on richards you're yeah. gonna go with 50 i'm throwing 60 but look uh that was a thing that jeff actually did he said he would go get him a six pack yeah, right, yeah. yeah, I would, I would pick up a six pack, you know, on a Saturday night and fire up Uno. And because it was <laughs> amazing, the things it's, it's a window of, of four people playing Uno. And in each window is a video feed. And at one moment, somebody pops in and one minute somebody pops out and you never know what you're going to see, but you did see a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they need to bring back Uno, dude. It's like they need to make look, that happen. There's four people here. So. 25% chance that someone's <laughs> crazy and just messed yeah. up in some weird it's way. It's like there was no filter or anything. Correct. So, That's like, awesome. Freedom of the, the good year. old days, I call it. So I'm saving my connect. <laughs> could work. Sunset Overdrive 2 could happen. Nice. Insomniac CEO Ted Price, apparently I forgot the E in Ted, uh, <laughs> has stated they are willing to make a sequel to the 2014 Xbox exclusive, though it needs a partner in order for it to happen. During a Twitch stream, Price stated, quote, Sunset Overdrive is something that I know a lot of our fans talk about wanting to see the sequel. We need a partner for that. That's a big game. Sunset 2 would be a very large scope game. He also stated that since they own the IP, a new publisher could allow for the game to appear on multiple platforms. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, Phil doesn't like that he said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking, like, it was a game that... I really enjoyed Jeff. Did, what wasn't that a release game? It was. It was a day one. No, it wasn't day one. It was the following. Are you sure? It was. It was the following uh, winter because you know Xbox no, One came don't. out in 2013, and then it came out the following October in 2014. Fact I, check alert. I didn't play it, but I, I want to say that it was because it was one of those situations where several games come out at once, it and did, that was the one that maybe didn't make it. it was, I think it was one of those things, yeah, that was their Microsoft exclusive, like one of their big games for the fall. And I, I must say, I think it was a game that had come out, like, say, in April or, you know, over the summer. Probably would have done a lot better. Um, so I can understand, Damn like, it. yeah. What? Uh, say it. You're right, Chris. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, those words hurt. So it bad. released uh, uh, in North America on October 28, 2014. Yep. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, so, you know, it is a game that, especially given the way, like, what we had the news with Star Wars, it was a single player game. There really wasn't much else to do after you finished. I could see why someone like, uh, Phil Spencer and all that isn't too inclined to go like, Hey, we're going to throw you another hundred million to make this game. I'm sure they would love to have it on their system, but it's hard to ask these people to make these kind of investments, uh, unless they really do think that they're going to make a lot of money. You were the only person I knew that played it. I loved it. Yeah. It was a great, and you game. spoke very, very highly of it too. Yeah. So. It's cool too. Like it has a cool kind of, um, alternative grind to it. Like, I mean, the Melvins are in the game, which is just weird to think that the Melvins have been in the game, but I, I enjoyed it. Like it was very punk <laughs> rock ish is the best way. And it had so many cool, like pop culture references in it that it was just fun. It looked really fun. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, on a, on a day I've got nothing to play. I, I might it reminded me, it reminded me of a Borderlands ish game. A little bit. I mean, 
better movement. Better but, movement. Yeah. Did it have loot and all that stuff you could get or not? Uh, yeah, like it was more about getting uh, currency to get these crazy weapons and outfits and things like that. Like by the end of it, I was doing all these crazy moves, jumping around. I had a Bushido blade. Um, I was wearing a superhero outfit. Why and, do I want a burrito right now, though? <laughs> and I had like <laughs> I had a gun that was shooting out records at people yeah, and all this other stuff. It was tight. it was just cool. Wasn't the crazy. entire premise uh, on power lines and? Yeah, basically, you would glide around. It felt like you know the best thing I could describe it as is um, infamous. But not nearly as serious, you know. The just tone more, was not as serious. Yeah, no, it was just fun. Because like, yeah, in Infamous, you were on those power lines too. That was you used to surf yeah. on them. Yeah, it was it was all about like staying still in uh, in Sunset Overdrive is about the worst mistake you can make in that game, and it, it it aims to get you to because it's all about building up a combo meter. So. I like the fact that you just said combo meter. Combo, c- 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 combo. <laughs> the greatest thing ever. <laughs> uh, games with gold for November. For November, uh, for those wondering, PlayStation Plus. Mm-hmm. I don't think was being announced until this afternoon at Paris Games Week. So you, that's you why could, I don't have that. You could. That'll be in next week. Yeah. John, you will take care of that. <laughs> the sta- John staff will take care of that next yes, week. Yes, his his. I'm <laughs> giving it up after this week. And speaking of uh, Paris uh, Games Week, mm-hmm. saw the. Uh, 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 Last of Us Two trailer. It's kind of brutal. Yeah, that's why I've heard. That Jeff, out. that's next week's show. Yeah, we can't uh, talk about just, it. Yet. Just go watch it. And be <laughs> We'd already locked this in. Uh, but <laughs> during this month, on uh, for the whole month, you can get Trackmania, Trackmania Turbo. Don't know what that is. I'm sure it's fun, I, dude. Yeah, combo meter up. and then track mania turbo he's on it i'm i'm out of control right now uh from the 16th through december 15th also on xbox one you can get tales from the borderlands uh Good that's game. awesome yeah awesome game i love that stuff uh nights into dreams is available from november 1st through the 15th on both xbox one and xbox 360 and deadfall adventures will be available from the 16th through the 30th on both consoles as well so go get them games if you want something to play and you don't have much of the cash to throw around, but you spend $60 to, on a year subscription. I might have to download the old Tales from the Borderlands again. Yeah, it was on. I want to say I got it from uh, PlayStation Plus had it one month and that's where I got it. Totally worth it. Yeah, totally but, worth but then it. we can't play together. Well, it's a single player <laughs> adventure because it's John's but, favorite company, Telltale. But I want to I wanna play with you. Well, we could go and play Borderlands 2. Or, Look at Jeff's or, face. <laughs> pre-sequel. <laughs> Woo! Ah, did you just Ric Flair? I might have Ric <laughs> Woo! All right, Rick. Okay, this is a long one. This is a big one. Yeah, all right. That's what but, she said. <laughs> that is my data. Details on Visual Games Star Wars Project Surface. Not to be confused with Microsoft Surface. But this this needed a good follow-up considering what we talked about last week, which could have been a basically a topic on its own. Right. Following last week's heartbreaking news, details have emerged concerning the now-defunct studio's project led by Amy Henning. Codename Ragtag, the game aimed to have a high story with a focus on scoundrels in space. Players would have followed Dodger, a cracked mirror version of Han Solo, in a story of crime families, heist, and more. EA execs wanted the project to be distinguishable distinguishable from Henning's last franchise, Uncharted, the game would have let players control several members of the heist team with an emphasis on sabotaging environments so that enemies could be distracted in non-lethal ways. It was also suggested that EA demanded a multiplayer function be incorporated into the project on top of the single-player campaign. Henning reportedly had no interest in... Uh, in diving into some of the most recognizable aspects of Star Wars canon, something that EA was not happy about. The project's slow progress led EA to bring in EA Vancouver in late 2016. Despite some progress, similarity to Uncharted games and a lack of key innovation that the development team could implement reportedly led to its cancellation last week. Following up to last week's cancel. Cancellation announcement, EA Executive Vice President Patrick Soderlin stated to Kotaku, quote, 
This truly isn't about the death of single player games. I love single player, by the way, or story or character driven games. Storytelling has always been a part of who we are and single player games will of course continue. This also isn't about the needing, uh, needing a game that monetizes in a certain way. Those are both important topics, but that's not what this is. At the end of the day, this was a creative decision. Our job is to give people a deep enough experience uh, and story, and it's also to push the boundaries forward. We just didn't think we were getting it quite right. Actually, the meat and potatoes of that, I think he's telling the truth. To some extent. Uh, I think it's still corporate speak, though, right? There's a little bit of corporate speak yeah. for sure. Uh, but I, I think that they told Amy, Hey, this is what we want. And Amy's like, well, this is what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, I'm Amy freaking Henning. Well, if you're Amy Henning, you're like, look, you came in and told me to do this. You knew what I wanted to do. If you want to do something else, then maybe well, I'm not juices. Too, yeah. You know, I'm, I'll go off and either ride off into my millions of dollars sunset or but someone dude, will hire her. the premise of what it was going to be. Oh, it sounds cool, doesn't <laughs> That's it? That's the second Star Wars game in, in my recent memory mm. to where it's it's there and you're like, whoa. And it's like, then it's gone. It's, I guess it's just one of those things like this is the problem with kind of Star Wars. Like when I read that line in there where it's like, look, there wasn't enough familiar parts of the canon. Like because she didn't want to have lightsaber. She didn't, she, she didn't want to dive into yeah. the most recognizable aspects of Star Wars. She canon. didn't want to be like, let's go to, you know, Tatooine again or wherever. It's like, no, I want to go off and I want to tell my cool, unique thing that's its own part that is very well could fit in this universe that we haven't seen. And it it's easy to panic on that kind of stuff. But I find like when you take those risks more times than not, that's where you get some of the most interesting thing. Like the best Star Wars game was the game that said, screw the current events that everyone's watching. Let's go back 2000 years ago. And that way we can craft something that's completely original and is unaffected by that. Or say like even here, you know, everyone seem, even though I'm not a huge fan of it, a lot of people really love to seem to love a, a rogue one, you know, as far as that as a Star Wars movie. And that doesn't feature any Jedi in the fa as far as, you know, the main storyline was concerned. I mean, you just came up with some decent points. That Star yeah. Wars game you were alluding to was, I think it was because it was really the only Star, you're talking about Knights of the Old Republic, right? Yeah. What else could you really play that was Star Wars themed? And it did, it delivered a great story. Jedi Academy. Mm. Uh, what? I don't think it was as good as Knights <laughs> of the Old Republic. Um, well, I mean, like before, that was the precursor. Was right. you know the two Jedi Academy games, and then there was also the uh, what was the one from uh, the N sixty four era? Everyone really liked that a lot. The uh, the flying one, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the flying one, he says, and you go, but yeah. no, yeah, like the story stuff. Usually, if there was a story, it was tied to the trilogy. And even here, you know, see, like, but I, I was going to say that people love if you do it right. We mm -hmm. love the trilogy stuff, mm -hmm. and the reason Rogue One worked was because it nestled right into the trilogy sure sure but it like it didn't require you to have the standard star wars you know like that movie is a lot more darker than any of the other it star was. wars yeah. and it it worked and people were okay with the fact that there wasn't a glowing stick on on the screen for all but what maybe one scene in the whole movie but right? being okay with it is different yeah. than it being a flat out star wars game with yeah. star wars canon and familiarity of the star wars universe and i mean it to be fair, like this is a, a giant machine. Like Star Wars is a giant machine that is designed first and foremost to make Disney a lot of money. And therefore they are very particular of how it's used. And if you're EA and you're spending a lot of money to get this, it's the same thing. You're going to be very particular of what you're putting out and making sure that it's doing the best to benefit your company, you know? I know. And yeah. that's, that's like, for instance, like here, you know, they went out. EA kind of, or Disney recently, they stretched out. They tried to get some interesting directors. I think they brought a really cool director in for the next movie. Uh, but JJ then, Abrams? <laughs> well, no, no. Before we get to that, <laughs> Rain Wilson. Uh, but then, you know, they tried to do the same thing for nine and it didn't work out. And what they do? They didn't skip a beat. They went right back to JJ Abrams because they know that man, the last time he made a Star Wars movie for them, made a billion dollars. When he made two movies of Star Trek, they made 
close to a billion dollars. So, you know, he's, he's money. That's, I don't care if he's the most original guy or whatever. Money, money. money. You're right. Money will always control exactly the direction of any company in the entire world. That's why Michael Bay makes all those Transformer movies, even though they're god off. Why does he put flags and explosions in every movie? Why is the Pentagon American? Why does it start out with? I feel like he's got in his contract. It's like there's got to be a shot of the Pentagon. We got to be panning around with the American flag out front. You know, as the sun rises on Washington. Chris loves that. Yeah, it's it's a Michael Bayism. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's 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 an interesting story. I really like hope someday, like any Amy Henning is able to just like come in and be like, here is a book on actually what happened. Like, or maybe some of the project leads on here can write a book and just say, like, we're writing this fictional story where we're not actually going to say Star Wars, but we're going to elude everything that happened. Did that, the description of what she was going to do sound cool to you, Jeff? Uh, (laughs) I mean, it was all right. He's not a huge Star Wars. I don't, don't, yeah, I I love Star Wars, but I know I've got a a huge Star Wars fan sitting next to me. That's true. But I'm saying that just, just sounded cool, didn't it? I was just, I was just going to say, I mean, reading what you said is, is really just, there's a hint of honesty in there. True. I I do feel that there's honesty. I really do, but I do feel like there's corporate speak and you got a loyal fan base. You got to get it right. You do got it. But see, I don't want a fine line. The people, the people put pressure on themselves to get it too right. Sure. See, if it was, if it was more about the quality of the game as a whole, right? They would have just canceled this thing. Yeah, I don't think it was about. And the it's quality. not about that. Yeah, it's obviously at least in part about we need to make money on this thing. So you know, if it was that certain ideas they were trying out and they're not working, you know, it's it, now it's about. It's kind of like how it was with Mass Effect. You got to find a way to get this game out. Well, I mean, we got to make money. Off anything of it. you do with Star Wars is a cash cow, right? You're Correct. not gonna, you're not gonna cut that out. You're just gonna focus on getting it right. Correct. But I'm, I'm actually interested in how it felt like Uncharted, but with Star Wars. <laughs> probably because there's like that's just cut my, scenes, and I mean, it's probably an action game because that's what she's really good at. Yeah. I mean. I, is anyone going to say that like the I'm, the train scene from Uncharted 2 from leaving there and going up to the mountains to then afterwards when it crashes and, and you find yourself climbing. climbing up. That is some of the best action moments in all of video game history. I would still say today. Yeah, like, it's you very know, memorable for sure. They've tried to constantly get back to that moment because that's their that's the definitive moment I think of that series in my opinion at least. Counter. Let's just let it mar- let it marinate for a minute when he says that stuff, Ooh. because he looks at us back and forth and he's like, "Counter it." Yeah. <laughs> <I don't know. sighs> All right. <clears throat> you ready for this? This is an important moment, Jeff. You're almost there. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Finally this week. <clears throat> Finally this week. Excuse me while I whip this out. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff said. <sighs> like he just drank a soda pop. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo announces Animal Crossing Pocket Camp and their latest Why Nintendo. You say it like that. <laughs> this is like this has gotta be charming. Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. Right. In their latest Nintendo Direct, the company revealed its next mobile game, Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, will release on both iOS and Android in late November. The game will feature a camping theme. The main focus appears to be crafting furniture from materials found in various areas to customize your camper van home. You'll be able to meet up with other players from your friends list and trade items. The game features free-to-play countdown timers and microtransactions. I think that kind of doesn't really surprise anyone. This game's going to make money. Oh, yes, it is. A lot of it. Oh, yes, it is. (laughs) Everyone goes like, how do they survive? I'm like, Trust uh, me, that company knows how to make dude, profit. The, the <laughs> fan base for Animal Crossing is ridiculous. For sure. Never for played sure. it, never really it. understood it, but I agree that apparently it's got a yeah. huge did you, following. Did you play Stardew Valley at all or like Harvest Moon back in the day? No. Okay, yeah. Like all those kinds of games, man. There's just something that's like, on one hand, it's like a really peaceful saying. So like when you've had a long day, you can put games in like this and you just feel nice and chill. But on the other hand, 
there's so many meticulous things to do that you're continuously <laughs> doing. You're like, how do I become friends with this guy? I got to make friends with that I've gotta badger. Find a wife. I yeah. got to plant this. I got to water this. This has to happen. I got to uh, cut yeah. that tree down. If I don't, if I don't focus on this, everything's just going to die. I can't let this all die. You know? Re- resource management. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, it's like <laughs> Sim course, City. Yeah. I've got enough of that in life. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's Sim City, but it's always, uh, running. And on top of that, there's a personal connection in there <laughs> with characters. So. You there can't were, be cold what was the game that came out? It was called like Golf Game. Oh, Golf Simulator or Golf RPG or whatever it was. Yeah, the the one that was like Stardew Valley, but mm. you played golf in it as well. Yes, amazing. Uh-huh. That's what I've heard. I'm Jeff gonna, needs to check. You need to check that out. Actually, I'm looking that up when I get home. <laughs> there you go. Something to play on your Switch. That's not Mario. It'd it was, be a great poop game. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Well, every Switch game is technically. Yeah, we a great we poop did game. we did go ahead and mandate that that your Switch has now become the ultimate poop game. You There's gotta no wipe question. it down once a week. That's for sure. <laughs> the first thing I do when someone says, "Here, would you mind playing my Switch real quick? Like, try one this game second. out." I go, "Hold on, let me break up my my UV light real quick." That explains the bleach smell when I got here. Exactly. <laughs> it's oh. definitely not the dead hooker. That's true. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> I didn't even talk about my uh, my adventure. I think you should talk about your adventure. Oh, man. I don't know when we'll talk about that. I feel like John's got to be here for that adventure. I'm down with Sorry, that. Sorry, Jeff. That's okay. Yeah. Jeff, uh, he just reminded you that you're not John. Yeah. I'm well aware. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to be. <laughs> or I gave you a lot more fight in your Star Wars conversation. Dang. Yeah, yeah that's I, true. I, that's true. I'll say this, too. Um, he's not used to seeing you on Mondays. Really, only the Friday and Saturday buffer. Yeah, so I've seen this him is twice today. For- this is really weird. <laughs> Throwing for a total. Who loop. are you? We took Jeff to a common man's lunch today at Burger King. That was really weird. That was, that was really, so, really it was weird. good in a house. Yeah, about the best like common man for you is usually like maybe crystals every now and then, or I don't know, mm-hmm. Jeff likes or, crystals, or, or of course the mall. I will know, say that but, we were going to go ultimate common man and go to Waffle House. We today, were, but you we shut were. that down, and you yeah. had me on that one can, as well. Can you tell me why? Uh, can you tell the audience why we couldn't have Waffle House today? Because I ate it before I went to court last week, and it was no nah, cliffhanger. So, talk yeah, to you later, people. Bye. <laughs> I can finally talk about what was going on at court, so we'll definitely uh, fill everyone in on that, because it was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Do you actually get to sign an agreement that says, now you can talk, or how does that work? I mean, the moment the case is over and you're released, you're free it's to It's a public record it. at yeah. that point, right? I mean, Do you cares? really want to make that story public? Right. <laughs> I would change uh, the names, and, and I would make I'm it... I'm going to have to start referring to myself on the show as juror number seven. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. All right. Let's uh let's wrap this up. Never. Okay. Never. Oh, there oh. it is. Not doing it. Okay. Emails. Electronic uh, mail. Wow, man. <laughs> Email from the future mail. So this was the ball and there was about four second droppage of the ball that Did happened. I? Not on you. Thanks. On this guy. Okay. <laughs> like he doesn't know. What he's I was, I was prepping the Twitter information. You heard the countdown. I, I, you know what? You said it and you, with, and theoretically I heard it because it went through my ears, but I didn't hear it. You let me down blue. <laughs> uh, first up, Scott. Writes in to weeklygameshad at gmail.com, which you can do every week. What's if you want to hear your Scott? emails on the show, that's weeklygameshad at gmail.com. Yes, it is. He says, hey, fellas. Hey. You're, Jeff, you're a fellow, fellow this today. week. You yeah. can say hey. Hey, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> this week's query regards sports games. I'm primarily a football, as in soccer fan, uh, and adore baseball in real life. And while I play a hefty amount of FIFA every year it comes out, I've been I've become disillusioned with MLB the show. It just doesn't tick my boxes anymore. I suspect because it feels so high or high bound with its presentation. However, man cannot live on FIFA alone. <laughs> so what other <laughs> sports games would you rate at the top of the list and why? Is it NBA two K and then everyone else, or is it any other sports franchise even close to 2K's apparent dominant apparent dominance. Full disclosure: the only NBA game I've ever played was 2K16, 
when it was PlayStation Plus free game last year. In, Thanks again and game on. In CAA 2017. That's really funny. <laughs> I got some bad it. news, Jeff. Oh, crap. Yeah. Chris, what's the baseball game on Xbox? Not RBI, the one that I love playing. Uh, oh, it's on um the Mega Baseball one? Yes, yeah, Super, Super Mega, Mega Baseball. That's on uh PlayStation as well. It is so. super fun. Yeah, if you want something that's like arcadey and just really cool. I don't want the word arcadey to throw you off, but it does have some arcade yeah, elements closer, to it. It's closer to like NBA Jam than it is to but a you, You're pitching, and you got to get three outs per inning, and you played seven or nine innings. It's, there is that's way, called baseball. There was way more to that game than I was expecting. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like super way good. So if you like baseball, that could be up your alley, and that way it won't take too much time from your FIFA. If you're if it as to his question, yes, NBA 2K really is that far ahead of everyone it else. Really is, yeah. yeah. They're kind of in their own little stratosphere. Um, I will say uh, we didn't talk about this earlier, but man, talk about a World Series living up to expectations because like every night it's just like home I'm, run central. I'm I'm really pulling for the Astros. Didn't you pick you pick the Dodgers? I picked the Astros. No, I didn't. I did. We have to go back. I, I want the Astros to win, but I think, but I thought the Dodgers would yeah. win if, I, if oh, that's yeah. the case. John, of course, is a Dodgers fan, mm-hmm. so he's heartbroken. I heard something I today about uh, they were looking at the ball, mm-hmm. and maybe it's uh, the it's, it's slicker on the outside, really, which they think maybe calls in more home runs. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, is that? I did. Um, they, they they go through a cycle when they change those kind of things when they notice an influx of home runs. And then they fix it so much that now all of a sudden the pitchers are over dominant. So they constantly go back and forth with that. And yes, it is a thing. Yeah. That's my official statement on it. <laughs> then I'll take it. <laughs> are there people really just hanging them curveballs out for them? Yeah, <laughs> really? Man, there are some of those shots that I'm like, God, he didn't even, he didn't Puig, even have any question. He knew he was hacking. <laughs> Puig hit one. It, lo- it looked like on the replay with one hand. There was the, he's a beast. There was an inside. I want to say it looked like kind of like a sinker that the guy in the fourth inning just completely turned on. And when I mean, he names, like, Chris, when he names, I can't remember uh, his name, but it was like, it, he looked like he was doing a golf swing. It looked like a golf swing. Yeah. That's how quick he got around on it. And I was just like, okay. And They're you pro- knew as soon as it went, you knew. They're pros, man. It's like they get paid for it. Like on purpose. Yeah. It's crazy. Hall of Famers. <laughs> Steve writes in. And he says, hey, guys. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. What's happening? I wrote in last week, but John had a fractured butthole. Ooh. (laughs) Hope you're back and feeling better. Got some bad news, Steve. Yeah, I got some bad news. (laughs) To talk. Hope you're back and better uh, this week to talk about the Mario game I won't be playing. Not that I don't want to, but the Switch simply doesn't exist in Maine. So I'm kind of relying (laughs) on you guys to tell me what's up in Nintendo World. Thanks again and game on, fellas. Game on, Steve. Well, um. I hope that eventually Nintendo exists in Maine because that would be the only excluded place on the planet that Nintendo's not in, apparently. I will say, lately it feels like whenever I go into my local GameStop, they usually at least have a couple of Switches. Uh, I can't speak to Best Buy. I haven't been there lately, but if we were, they are becoming, is, is becoming clear that they are stocking up for the winter. If yeah. we were legit podcast hosts who really cared about their fans, well, we would work out some sort of system where we're like, email us. We'll email you when it's here, but they're going to send us money to buy it. I, I, I know you got a look on your face, Chris, like we were going to buy it for him. That is not the case. We would be like a facilitator of funds and, and product. You can not contact- drug related DEA. <laughs> <laughs> you can contact Sean with that idea. Uh, you can do that. He can give out his personal email. <laughs> uh, and finally, got one more. Came in late. What? Came in late. Oh, I thought you said Kim E. Lake. Yep. Kim E. Lake. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> uh, David in North Virginia. Hey, David. Hey, David. He titled this A Challenge. Ooh. So, be interesting. Hope it's a physical challenge, like on Double Dare. <laughs> I'm going to take the... Uh, well, Name uh, a better uh, better host than Mark Summers. That's pretty... There's, there's probably like 16 hosts you could name, but... <laughs> From Nickelodeon? Yeah. Uh, what's his face from Guts? Oh, yeah, that guy from Guts was Edo, awesome. It's, it's not Edo, Mike. Michael Malley? Is it Mike? <laughs> no. <laughs> ah, man, he's on Glee also. Because he's Kurt's dad. Yeah, isn't it Michael Malley? You might be right. I can't remember. Look it up. You Google got, that junk. 
We need to know if that's Michael Malley. Sidetrack alert. But anyways, he says, hey, Chris, John, Sean, uh, spelled like Sean Michael. Sorry. It's okay. That's an incorrect kid, David. Uh, and Penny. And I guess and Jeff, we'll just say. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Ben. It's been a while. Been a while. It's been a while. I hear you guys bantering about your different tastes in games, and it's caused me to wonder if gaming preferences don't have something to do with personality types. You know, Myers-Briggs personality types. Oh, wow. This is going to be deep. Layers and such that denote the patterns, preferences, communication styles, et cetera, et cetera. Myself, I'm an INFP. So I'm not naturally as excited about playing games with an online multiplayer element. Just let me zone out in a fantasy world and don't talk to me. However, a few years ago, a friend convinced me to try Battlefield. And had I not taken his suggestion, I would have never grown to love what has become one of my favorite franchise or my all time favorite franchises. While the topic of gaming preferences and personality types could be a topic all to itself, I'd like to throw a challenge to you guys. You guys know each other's uh, gaming preferences pretty well. And probably your MBPTs for that matter. We don't. Um, I want to love you. Uh, MBTPT FICP. <laughs> Did you just do an insane clown posse throw in there? Did I? I think he said Did ICP at the Did end. I? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Miracles. <laughs> So two of you could decide between one another what game the third person has to play. It has to be something the third person just knows he won't like. And it has to be something the other two guys just know he will enjoy if he gives it a fair chance. You could call your little challenge, quote, don't tell me what to play, or it's a new thought, so I fear it, or here, Richard, play this game. I like that one. (laughs) Here, Richard. Then you could devote the entire topic to the results of your experiment. What say you? Keep up the great work, fellas. You are the highlight of my podcast week. That's what's up. Thank you so much for that. Also, he says, Thug Life, your mom's box. (laughs) Peace out. That's fine. (laughs) Uh, Thank you. That was a clever idea. I I like it. It's a cool idea. We will have to, Dave, that will be something we would have to discuss with John. And, and man, maybe I don't maybe, know. I don't know. We'd really have to dig this. But out. maybe we we draw a spin on it to where we write our names in a box. What's in the box? What's in the box? And we draw a name, and then that person is now the, the going to be the guinea pig, and the other two have to collaborate, mm-hmm. kind of add a we little twist to it. You know what I mean? We could do like a slow rotation over a couple of months. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, for when there's like nothing to talk about, which is like see the last couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Um. <laughs> I'm trying to think. What could I make John play? Anything online. That's easy. Yeah, yeah but no, remember, he says something. Call of Duty. No, 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 remember, it's supposed to be something that they're like, no, 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 I would hate that. But the re- me and you would be like, well. New Call of Duty, World War Two. We think you would actually like that. He likes war. <laughs> no, no, not really. I'm, Dude, I'm still blown away when I think about it, how much John loved Doom. That is true. Right. And then it made like his top five of the year list. So we should make him play Overwatch. There we go. Got it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> That'd be hilarious if he just came back. Because he does like, I mean, to be fair, he does like, uh, he likes playing Splatoon 2. He does. He likes Doom. So obviously he likes first person shooters. We could make an argument that he would enjoy Overwatch 2. But he probably wouldn't because he'd have to work with others and he ain't. <laughs> <laughs> anything to do with other people i don't know oh, that's funny. john you let us know how, what would just make you go no <laughs> ah what you got on twitter mentions there uh s- let's see tyranna tyranna tortoise tortoise why do i always mess up that tyranna tortoise tortoise uh he said hey at weekly games chat i just watched the trailer for wolfenstein 2 nine oh uh, calm down <laughs> uh because it's coming chris do I need to have played the first to get the most out of it? Hashtag nine. <laughs> <laughs> probably, but uh, you I, could probably watch a summary and you'd be fine. You think you even have yeah. to go as far as to watch the I summary? Mean, it is a story thing and, you know, does continue the story of Steve. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Blaskowitz. I can't remember his first name. So if you want to know exactly. BJ Blaskowitz. You, thank, thank you. If you want to know what you're walking into. Yeah, you probably should. I mean, the most important thing, of course, is just that you're in America and Nazis are ruling it. So if you've seen Man in the High Castle, you got a good understanding. And, and we talked about this earlier this week. If you mm. didn't play 
what we're calling the first one. But if you go sure. back to previous Wolfensteins, if you played those, yeah, there was somewhat of a change of pace, sort of, yeah. between the old Wolfensteins and this mm. past iteration and this new one. The new, the last, let's call the one that's coming out, part two, they are somewhat tied together. True. Um, so, yeah, to your point, Chris, you do kind of need to uh, just did catch you- up a hair. But, but what I'm trying to say is, is if you did like I did and played the old Wolfenstein's, mm. um, they're just a little bit different now. Because you didn't play the new order one. Yeah, I did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one thing I will say, if, if you do play the new order, the worst part of the game is actually the opening like level. So it, you get like, past that, you're good to go. Yeah, like the opening level just doesn't play very well, and then once you get past that, it's like, oh, okay, was this, and this is great, you know, and it just keeps picking up. Uh, but yeah, for whatever reason, you don't want to go back, which I don't understand why you wouldn't. Um, if you're interested in this game, you can at least go on YouTube, and I'm sure find someone will have put a summary out there for the new order. I'll say so if you, you got the time and the funds, do it. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you on that. Ian the Cheese It said at Weekly Games Chat, don't worry, Chris. Ooh. Penny isn't the only dog that chews her own nails. That's oh. a callback. Uh, mine does it all the time. Okay. I also put out a she thing. Was, um, what is she doing it now? She no, was she's, earlier. Oh, she's knocked she's out. She's in a coma. She's knocked out. Well, she, uh, in order to assist John, uh, with his family emergency, I went and, uh, house sit his dogs last night so she spent all yesterday afternoon with three large lovable puppies uh just having the time of her life so now she's she's a little tuckered out today (laughs) i threw out a tweet to uh ask anybody who got you know the three games that came out because this was a big release day yeah i said so what you got mario odyssey assassin's creed origins or wolfenstein 2 um and i had a couple people uh chapman chat mad sorry said he got mario uh, mm-hmm. Tyranitaurus said none of yet, but he's really close to getting Wolfenstein too. See the previous tweet that he gave us. Um, what's this guy's name? Whoa, that's us. Tighten up, Sean. Man, you're terrible. What's this guy's name? This is what I have to deal with. There it is. Uh, Perchik to Kerchak. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, said I picked up Mario and some amiibos. That's nice. I really, by the way, want those new wedding amiibos. Yeah. yeah, I heard that they're uh, they're kind of hard to get the Bowser. I heard the Mario and Peach Wait, is really you're good. saying there's new Amiibos out and they're really hard to get? Go figure. Wow. <laughs> I'm so shocked. Um, uh, Sorry, Slim Tim 13. He said he would like to hear our thoughts on Wolfenstein uh, and, and that he thinks John will have lots to say about it. My guess is, Tim, I don't want to lock us in for certain, but... Next week, we're going to talk about Assassin's Creed. I'm thinking the week after that, we're probably going to talk about the old Call of Duties. But it's possible the week after that might be when we finally get some Wolfenstein love on there. Um, if not, John will, if he started it, he'll at least give you an update. Yeah, for sure. We're looking out for y'all. Uh, obviously, we have a very big black uh, <laughs> backlog right now of games. Uh, that we have to get through. I mean, we haven't even discussed internally, like things like, for instance, uh, Battlefront 2. Right. Like when we would do that. And of course, um, there's, there's a PC game that came out that's actually been really high, highly praised that I plan on getting soon. And like, are we going to talk about that? So, you know, stuff like that. We're, we're looking out for you. The last one. So we can go ahead and, um, in this wonderful podcast that you've enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, at Baldy Pal uh, said at Weekly Game Chat, hashtag Super Mario Odyssey, and my nine year old beat it over the weekend. Hashtag winner. Nice. Indeed. Him and Holden, apparently. Yeah. Apparently, apparently nine year olds <laughs> love this game. Right? <laughs> That's what's up. Well, they, they don't look for anything. They're just like, look, if I just go forward, I win. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Thank you for all the love on Twitter. And for those of you, if you don't know, you can follow us, of course, at Weekly Game Chat on the Twitter. For sure. Chris will every Wednesday post the show and then we'll hopefully call you out one day on the air about something you talked to us about. So thanks again.
Jeff, thank you for coming on by yeah, on today's show. Thank you for having you, me. You Super filled a sweet. hole that we didn't expect to have, and you filled it well. <laughs> well that's that has to be a something do, so, he or she I, said that right. <laughs> Philip, you, I, I don't. I don't know. How to like come. the real Richard, we knew you would be. You just filled it pure. For the record, I think Jeff is the original Richard. He really is. <laughs> It is because you're he's 85. Welcome. I think you invented the Richardness yeah. of everybody that now is a, a circle of our friendship people. Circle of Richards. Yeah. He, <laughs> just a bunch of. He is patient zero. <laughs> just a bunch of hands and Richards. Wait, what? Um, <laughs> uh, if you like the show, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or whatever podcast service you want to. You'll get a new episode of Sean Says every Wednesday. Uh, if they have a rating system or some sort of review system, drop us a line. Give us some, some upvotes, whatever it is. It helps people find the show. Jeff didn't know we had a show until one day he searched something. He was like, what are these terrible people? And he clicked on it, and then he was like, wait a minute. I think I know these two Richards. That's not true. They talk about it all the time. Yeah, it's true. We never <laughs> shut up. Uh but that said, John, get back here because this has been episode 127 and we miss you. We do, buddy. Yeah. Miss you, bud. We really do. Uh, until next time, I will simply say, me, say, ah, game on, Sean. Game on, Chris. Game on, Jeff. Game on, Chris. That was really weird to say. I wasn't ever expecting that. Game on, so. Sean. <laughs> Thank you. Game on, Jeff. <laughs> Your mom's box. Peace out, everybody. Squeeze in on my money. <laughs> what? <laughs>